Hey there, Jake from Drone Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to attach the Zenmuse X5 camera and gimbal from the Inspire One Pro onto the DJI Osmo. Now, this is not for the faint-hearted, as it does require grinding of some of the metal on the Osmo, and I'm positive will void your warranty for the Osmo. But if you were excited about getting the X5 onto the Osmo and just couldn't wait any longer for the bracket, this is how you do it. If you decide to do this project, understand that you're doing it at your own risk. We wanted to show you the process that we went through to attach the X5 gimbal to the Osmo. First thing you need to do is remove the top mounting bracket from the Osmo. You do this by unscrewing the four screws that are located inside the bracket. Now on this Osmo, we used a 1.5 millimeter Allen key to remove the bracket, but on our other Osmo, we used a tiny Phillips head screwdriver. So um, there may be another version out there as well, but we got first run on one of the Osmos and then we purchased a second handle for this project. And that's the one that came with the Allen keys. So let's make note of how much we're going to need to shave off of this bracket. Um, you're going to take off about two millimeters, which will take you almost to the center of that red dot that's right above the lock on the bracket. All right, so let's remove the four Allen key screws. All right, and don't forget to put those screws somewhere safe because you will be reattaching it with the same screws. Now for this project, you're gonna to wanna to work on a flat and clean surface. And uh, because we're gonna be shaving off some of the metal on this bracket, we wanna protect the inner parts of the bracket. And the reason for that is um, the center of this little tiny piece here um, actually comes out and there's some grease in there. And uh, we really wanna avoid uh, any metal shavings getting in there. But uh, easiest way to do that is to take some tape and uh, put it on the inside and then flip the bracket over and uh, do it on the outside as well. So we're just using blue painter's tape here. Um, you could use any kind of tape you want, probably use uh, duct tape or electrical tape, whatever it may be. Next, you're gonna run a strip of tape all the way around the side of the bracket. Um, this is going to kind of solidify the seal uh, of the tape and it's also gonna give you a little bit of a handle uh, when you're grinding off the metal. I probably would use a wider tape next time, something like a four inch tape, um, and you'll see why in a second when we start grinding, but uh, there really wasn't much of a handle and there probably should have been a little more. Now make sure you're working on a flat surface and take a rough grit sandpaper. This is an 80 grit. And uh, really what you're gonna wanna do is just start sanding the piece of metal. It's just aluminum. Now this took a long time to do. In retrospect, uh, I definitely should have used an angle grinder or an at least an electric sander, but uh, we probably have three hours into this sanding the way that it is here, uh, but it did work. And when we were done, uh, we removed the tape and it looked like this. Uh, we were able to remove the two millimeters necessary to allow the X5 to fit on the Osmo. So now let's install the bracket back on the Osmo handle. Uh, we're just gonna take the newly sanded bracket and reinsert the four screws that we removed Make sure not to over tighten them. Uh, the screws are just screwing into plastic inside of the Osmo handle. All right, so now it's time to insert the X5 into the Osmo. Now be gentle with this. Um, it, it does take a little wiggling to get it in there, uh, but once you get it once, it seems to work just fine. Uh, tighten it as you would the X3 gimbal. And congratulations, you just installed the X5 onto the Osmo. So now for the moment of truth, let's turn it on. Now you may hear the beeps from the Osmo indicating that a firmware upgrade is needed or initializing. Um, we could not get the Osmo to update firmware uh, once the X5 was installed. Uh, I will prompt you when you go into the DJI Go app, but uh, we were failing each time. Uh, it would only get to 40% and then it would stop, but that didn't seem to stop it from working. So now I want to point out that not all of the functionality is working with the X5 attached. Uh, there's obviously a firmware update that needs to happen and I'm sure will happen once they release the bracket. Um, we had trouble shooting in 60 frames a second, but 4K did work, which was nice. 
Something else to note is that the X5 gimbal makes it a little difficult to control the Osmo on the back. So if you're trying to uh, turn the gimbal head or, or move it around or whatnot, uh, makes it a little difficult. The trigger in the front, obviously no problem, uh, but the joystick controller on the back is a little difficult to use. Uh, we should also note that we don't know what the long-term effects are on the X5 gimbal, uh, being that it's not mounted the way that it's mounted on the Inspire. So these two little prongs at the top uh, slide into the uh, dampening plate on the Inspire and really make it sturdy and, and hold it in place. Uh, didn't seem like an issue when we were carrying it around. It's a very sturdy and well-built uh, gimbal on the back and uh, everything seemed to be fine. I think that it probably will have more of an effect on the Osmo handle than it would on the X5 gimbal. So let's hop into the Go app and uh, look at some of the settings here. First thing you'll notice is that we do not have any aperture control settings. Now we have an auto, we have a shutter priority, and we have an, a manual just like we do with the regular Osmo and the X3, but they do not give us the aperture settings. But the aperture still does work in automatic or in shutter priority. You just have to lock the exposure so that it doesn't constantly change as you're moving from light to dark. So the manual setting seemed to be a little trickier. It kept defaulting back to an arbitrary f-stop. We had it at one point at 3.5, another time it was 6.2. But we did find that if you start shooting in shutter priority or in automatic and then switch it to manual, you're able to lock in the f-stop setting that way. So um, not ideal. Uh, we definitely want to see that firmware update come out so that we have full control with the f-stops. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we can use uh, exposure compensation and then shutter priority and automatic and then just lock our exposure and uh, use it that way. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of doing this modification. So the pros are the use of f-stops, finally, right? Um, increased low light performance and uh, the use of depth of field and overall higher quality camera. But the cons are a really buggy Go app. We've had it crash a few times. Uh, we have no 60 frame per second shots, uh, limited functionality. We couldn't get Panorama or a bunch of the other functions to work. Um, it will most definitely void your warranty and you'll have to grind the metal. So uh, really, ultimately, it's up to you. Uh, we felt like it was worth it because we wanted to see how the X5 camera worked on the Osmo. But ultimately, let's leave it up to the footage. All of these clips are unedited. Uh, we just dropped them right into uh, the video here so that you can see them. If anyone's interested in seeing the unedited kind of raw files off of the Osmo with the X5, let me know and I'll make sure you get those files. Both the 48 and the 60 frame per second footage had some colorful artifacting. We're not really sure why. Here you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison of the four different frame rates, so you can see some noticeable differences here. If you're planning on doing this modification yourself, please let us know of your progress. I'd love to see some footage and uh, see how you know the process goes for you. If you found this video useful, please like it, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe.